Welcome to the Kimberlite Drilling Services webinar. My name is David Batt, President of Kimberlite Research, and I'm glad that you're able to join us today. This is the 11th in the Kimberlite webinar series. Our past webinars have included reviews of many of the oil field products and services commonly used in the industry, such as hydraulic fracturing, artificial lift, cementing services, surface wallheads, subsea equipment and services, and others. We've also taken a deep dive into the Permian Basin in a review of the competitive landscape of the big three oil field service companies, Schlumberger, Halliburton, Baker Hughes. Last month, we reviewed the pipeline integrity and inline inspection services market. Let us know if you or your colleagues need access to these prior webinars to send us an email or a chat message today. Today, we'll be reviewing the competitive landscape for the global drilling services market, including downhole mud motors, MWD, early sterile systems, drill bits, and drilling fluids, along with updates on the use of real-time operations and other technologies. Feel free to submit questions during the presentation via the chat box, or you can email us directly at Kimberlite, and we'll address your questions uh, during the presentation. For those of you that are, may not be familiar with Kimberlite Research, I'll provide a brief background and then dive into the Drilling Services Review. Kimberlite Research each year interviews through one-on-one -on -one phone interviews about 3,000 ENP operators and users of oil field services and pipeline services worldwide globally. Some of you on the webinar today may have actually participated in one of our industry, industry studies in the past, and for that, I say thank you. Thanks to your feedback and contributions, we're able to provide this information and benchmarking for the industry. Our research is about 50% international and about 50% North America. We produce a series of industry reports talking to geologists and geophysicists on formation evaluation related topics, drilling engineers and drilling managers for drilling related topics, completion, production, subsea, and pipeline. Today, we'll be reviewing interviews with 308 different drilling engineers and managers and advisors worldwide, representing over 200 different oil and gas operating companies globally, and to review the Mud Motors report, the MWD report, Road Restorables report, Drill Bit, and Drilling Fluids report. The data set is rich and multidimensional. In this exhibit, we cross plot supplier performance on the X axis versus pricing competitiveness on the Y axis. Before diving into the data, I'll just give a brief explanation of this quadrant map and then dive in. This value map, as we refer to it, is the visual picture depicting the competitive landscape of the suppliers for each product line. The top right-hand quadrant is the premium offering quadrant where suppliers may cost more than industry norm, but deliver better than industry average performance. So effectively, they cost more, but they're worth it. Bottom right is value managed. Suppliers in this bottom right-hand quadrant are poised to gain market share or perhaps to improve uh, financial performance. Suppliers in the bottom left are discount providers. Um, they underperform the market, but they offset their underperformance with attractive pricing to effectively customers, uh, operators such as yourself, get what you pay for. And then uh, any suppliers at the top left are value disadvantaged. So with that, let's dive in. One of the first things that we like to assess when we go talk to the oil and gas operators globally is operator sentiment. And when we take a look at operator sentiment, this is the diffusion index, if you will, where we ask the operators if they plan to increase their drilling expenditures, say for 2022 versus 21. And keep in mind, all these interviews were recently conducted in, in May, June, and July, uh, just most recently. So looking ahead, you can see globally about 52% of the operators worldwide expect to increase drilling expenditures moving into 2022. 39% expect to keep expenditures flat versus prior year, and only 9% expect to decline expenditures. The sentiment index at the bottom of the graph, all the indices are above 50, both for North America, international, and offshore. This is what's setting up for many to believe a multi-year investment cycle because it's been quite some time we've had offshore, international, and North America all exhibiting uh, investment indices of these numbers all pointed in the same direction at the same time. Looking at this exhibit, when you track 
investor sentiment over the last five or so years. You can see coming out of the 2015 downturn how U.S. land uh, was the first to rise above the critical 50 indices, indicating uh, expansion of the market. And then you can see before we even came into the COVID crisis of March of 2020, Canada and the Gulf of Mexico had already entered into the contraction market with indices below 50, and U.S. land was in decline. Looking more specifically at drilling activity projections for 2022, what we find is that globally, the oil and gas operators worldwide are projecting to drill 14.2% more wells in 2022 versus 2021. Regional variances are observed with U.S. land up 19.9%, Canada up 33%, albeit off a much smaller base. International offshore up around in the 10, 12, 15% range. But again, you see international offshore and North America all projecting increases in expenditures. So after two years of continued uh, underinvestment and declining investment, we're setting ourselves up for what many will believe will be uh, an investment growth cycle for 2022, 23, and 24. As you know, um, oil consumption is back up to about 98 million barrels per day and is anticipated to go over 100 million barrels of oil production demand today in 2022. When you look at pricing projections and how pricing trends have, have, have taken place, as everybody knows, back in 2020, pricing concessions were provided by the oil field service companies in order to adjust to the current market conditions. Uh, looking ahead now, uh, where we are now going into 2022, you can see that 82% of the North America land oil and gas operators with whom we interviewed expect pricing to go up. Um, and whereas internationally and offshore, only about 30% of the operators expect pricing to increase. The average increase in pricing is about 11.4% anticipated for North America land and about 3% internationally and offshore. While there's a disparity in the percent of price increases, it's also important to keep in mind a couple of other factors. In 2020, the price discounts extended in North America land averaged nearly 15%, whereas internationally and offshore price discounts were more in the single digit range of 6, 7, 8%. So these nominal price increases don't fully recover the oil field service companies from the discounts that they provided previously. But also, given the current inflationary pressures with uh, transportation costs, particularly coming from the Asia PAC regions, more than double that they were uh, pre COVID coupled with the cost of steel and other increases, uh, clearly it's anticipated that in addition to these projected price increases, that depending upon various products and services, these price increases could in fact continue to climb due to transportation, cost of steel and such. One of the new questions that we asked in the 2021 report was to try to understand operators' willingness to engage in performance-based incentive contracts with their directional drilling suppliers. And what we find globally is the market segmented about 59% to 41%. But closer evaluation reveals that the oil and gas operators internationally and offshore are more open to engaging with the directional drilling suppliers uh, with incentive-based contracts, mainly because the benefits that are seen by the long gas operators, they see improved efficiency, better overall performance, uh, clearly alignment of goals and accountability. For those oil and gas operators that do not see benefit in engaging uh, in performance-based incentive contracts, most of the feedback as to why they were not interested in it was they just truly believed it wasn't needed, it wasn't something that they have used in the past and they drilled their wells and didn't feel like they needed in the future. But clearly, the market is split on that, with, um, particularly in, in the North America land market. But we are seeing an increasing aptitude for using performance-based incentive agreements and you know, where we create win-win scenarios for the industry. When we talk to the oil and gas operators about where they're experiencing some success with their drilling programs through the use of various technologies, what we find is that the North America land operators most commonly cite improvements in rotary steerables, mud motors, and drill bits are breaking them success, whereas the international land operators also uh, mention drilling fluids along with bits and rotary steerables as the top three technologies that are really helping to bring success to their drilling programs. When we take a look at the offshore oil and gas operators, 
they mentioned uh, several different technologies as bringing them success. In addition to rotary stairwells, vents, and drilling fluids, they also mentioned logging while drilling technologies and managed pressure drilling. So clearly you see that there are certain commonalities between drill bits and rotary stairwells bringing success globally. Drilling fluids uh, play an element larger role internationally and offshore. And of course, managed pressure drilling in the offshore market. 2021 was a survey in which uh, we also wanted to include updates on real-time operations support. Across our research, talking to geologists, drillers, completion engineers, production engineers, we continue to see a very strong trend towards the use of digital technologies and remote technologies. And so in this 2021 survey, what we learned was that about 55% of the operators with whom we interviewed globally cited the use of real-time operations support for 100% of the wells. And opposing on this graph is about 24% of operators interviewed indicating that they really didn't use real-time operations support. But looking ahead by region, we find that North America tends to be the heaviest users of real-time operations support, internationally less so. But the international operators are planning to increase their use of real-time operations support moving forward into 2022. The key reasons for the use and increased use is that the operators are citing improvements in efficiency, better communications, better quicker decision-making, improved safety, and, and, and cost savings as a result of using real-time operations. The real-time operations support are most commonly being used for MWD and LWD, currently comprising nearly 60, 63% of all MWD use globally today, followed by directional drilling at 55%. Reservoir navigation is, is, is the least used amongst uh, real-time operations, and they currently comprises about 38% of the wells drilled amongst the respondents of operators with whom we interviewed for the 2021 survey. When we asked the operators, the oil and gas operators, which suppliers they were most commonly using for real-time operations support, it's no surprise that Slimmerjay, Baker Hughes, and Halliburton were the three most commonly cited suppliers for real-time operations support. The big three suppliers are also the largest uh, directional drilling suppliers in the world, uh, in the marketplace, and they have very large um, real-time operations centers. You can see that Slumberjay's penetration of use is highest in the offshore and international markets and less so in the North America land market. And you see that trend as well a little bit for Halliburton and, and Baker Hughes. Other suppliers mentioned as being used for scientific drilling, Corva, and others. When we asked the oil and gas operators how likely they would be to recommend their real-time operations support supplier to friends and colleagues to use for future use, this customer loyalty rating is measured by the Net Promoter Score. The industry average is a very healthy 27.2 and compares very favorably to the broader oil field services index average of 22. 0 for all things in the oil field, so seven is pretty good. Amongst the big three, Halliburton's customer loyalty ratings are below industry average, along with Weatherford. Um, but Slumberjay and Baker Hughes customer loyalty ratings are on par with industry average, or actually a bit higher. Some small to mid-tier suppliers that stand out for real-time operations support include Scientific Drilling and Corva. Both companies have customer loyalty ratings that are two times higher than the industry average, reflecting a very high level of satisfaction amongst the oil and gas operators using scientific drilling and CORVA for real-time operational support. One of, the, one of the trends that we see as we move towards real-time operations and use of digital is the increased use of dual telemetry with MWD. Back in the 2019 survey on the right-hand portion of our graph, only about 9% of North America land uh, use uh, for MWD was dual telemetry. And this use has doubled almost to 17%. So we'll continue to see improvements in technologies and telemetry systems, even for mud pulse, which is the predominant form of telemetry. We see advances being made in mud pulse to be able to improve the, the bits the data per second that can be transmitted by mud pulse. So we'll continue to see improvements in telemetry and we'll continue to track the adoption rates of dual telemetry, EM, and mud pulse moving forward. 
When we turn to the mud motor section, mud motors are very commonly used on practically most wells drilled in North America land and very commonly internationally and all short about the 50 to 60 percent plus range of wells uh, using mud motors. Um, one of the most biggest desired improvements in mud motors cited by the oil and gas operators is, is longer durability and longevity and longer run times. As you know, these mud motors are really pushed to the limits by the operators, particularly when they start using them for steering applications. Um, there's needs for high pressure, high temperature applications, particularly in the Haynesville here in the United States. Um, so proper selections of elastomers and just improved uh, rebuild standards. The QA, QC standards need to be a little bit more consistent. But all, all in all, all these uh, suggested improvements are really geared towards in improving the longevity and the runtime of these mud motors before failure. When we ask the oil and gas operators who they use for mud motors, what we find is that the market is extremely fragmented. On the bottom right-hand side of, of, of this graph, the North America land operators, oil and gas operators, cited the use of nearly 50 different suppliers for mud motors. International land oil and gas operators cited the use of 16, and the offshore oil and gas operators only cited the use of five different suppliers for mud motors. So you can clearly see a consolidation of the supplier base offshore and a very heavy fragmentation of the market in North America land. For those of you that contribute to our industry studies, you know, thanks to your feedback, we're able to track not just market use and penetration of the suppliers, but we can also track market share of the suppliers as to who has the highest levels of market share. You can see in North America land, the big three only comprise about 30% of the market. The other 70% is with the other small to mid-tier suppliers. You can see how the market share begins to tighten up international land to the big four, including Weatherford. Um, and, um, and then offshore, really the big three. When the oil and gas operators rate the performance of their mud motor suppliers on a scale of one to 10 on these seven performance measures, responsiveness to customer needs, equipment quality and reliability, competency of field service personnel, technical support, availability, overall mud motor performance and pricing competitiveness, one of the first things that stands out from the eyes of the oil and gas operators is that there's a huge variance in performance between the very best performing mud motor suppliers. They're getting average ratings on a scale of one to 10, close to nine, and the very worst performing mud motor suppliers that are getting average ratings in the low sevens or even into the sixes on these various performance measures. This highlights a very critical observation that the mud motor suppliers through the eyes of the end users, the oil and gas operators, are not performing homogeneously the same. And since we update this report every year, we can begin to track and benchmark supplier performance year by year from 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. And what we find here is in North America land, you can see the industry average, which is the dash line, how uh, industry review ratings improved and they declined going into 18 and 19, and then they began to show improvement in ratings from 19 to 20 to 21 for responsiveness to needs, technical support, field service, mud motor reliability. And so the overall performance trends for the industry are very positive and they are improving through the eyes of the end users, the oil and gas operators. Some suppliers like MS Directional, uh, Pro Directional, Scientific Drilling uh, are showing improvement and receiving customer review ratings that are higher than the industry average. Others say here like Halliburton, um, you know, receiving customer review ratings that are below industry average for responsiveness to needs. You can see Halliburton's reliability ratings, albeit stable from 20 to 21, are actually falling behind the industry average where the other suppliers are making improvements. Um, you can see MS Directionals made tremendous improvements and, and, and their bottom assembly of their mud motors, and you see that um, showing up and improved reliability um, through the eyes of the customers as well as internal service tracking data. Um, and so it's very important to be able to benchmark performance of the suppliers, recognizing that the suppliers are, are not homogeneously performing at the same level. If we begin to translate these performance trends onto the quadrant map or the value map, 
what we find on this quadrant map for North America land is that suppliers like Pro Directional, MS Directional, and Phoenix uh, tend to be viewed as value advantaged, along with Baker Hughes, Scientific Join, and NOV, all very competitively positioned as delivering very strong value. KLX and LAME are viewed as underperforming, but using low price to kind of position themselves as more of a discount provider of services, whereas Somerger and Halliburton are competitively disadvantaged through the eyes of the end users. And they're um, really based on the feedback uh, for customer reviews and users um, really need to um, continue to improve performance to move over to the right to support uh, their current pricing profiles and strategies in the marketplace. Competitive positioning and, and, and top performers um, does change by region. You can see we've got the Permian Basin uh, plotted up here in the top left with MS Directional, Phoenix, and NOV uh, plotted very favorably. You have Scout picking up some good customer reviews. Um, Eagleford, Haynesville, um, you know, Halberton plotting pretty solidly in the Haynesville with the capability of handling high temperature um, applications in the Haynesville and then in Canada. Internationally, the comparative landscape tightens up. Slumberger is viewed as really the overall best performer for mud motors in the international market. In offshore, the oil and gas operators, offshore oil and gas operators see differentiated value, pay more, get more, or pay less and get less with Halliburton as a discount provider. If we take a look at some of the overall performance summaries by some of the major suppliers for mud motors, you can see how Baker Hughes is favorably positioned in North America and offshore, considered to be performing on par in the international market, fairly consistent from year to year, with their customer loyalty ratings continuing to improve. So very strong overall performance profile for Baker Hughes for mud motors. Halliburton's overall performance, as you can see from year to year, for the most part, has been at best performing close to industry average or slightly better, but in, for most years, they've been viewed as performing below industry average. And in the most recent years, you can see that their com performance and competitive positioning has declined overall globally. However, when you look recently, you'll find that Halliburton in US land and offshore are viewed as delivering acceptable values in the marketplace, um, even though they're not viewed as providing industry leading performance. Uh, they're able to structure their pricing strategies to be considered an acceptable value and, and clearly fall in within the fair value fairway. International land is probably the most vulnerable area um, for Halliburton for mud motors. Slumbershay, competitively positioned and delivering strong value internationally and offshore, competitively challenged in the U.S. land market. Weatherford, um, as you know, Weatherford exited the North America land market, so this is really focused on the international part of Weatherford's focus. You can see over the years, Weatherford has historically been viewed to the eyes of the customers based on customer reviews as underperforming the market, but commonly using low pricing as an attractive mechanism to try to align as a discount provider. You can see Weatherford is showing some improvement in overall performance and positioning from 20 to 21. And, um, and we, I think we also see a very similar improvement with Weatherford for MWD that we'll see in a moment. NOV, very consistent, solid performer. You can see US land, international land is where they're uh, viewed competitively most favorably. And then the offshore um, exhibiting some vulnerabilities. Scientific drilling, consistently viewed as usually a value advantage supplier. They did drift over a little bit for mud motors in 2021. But if you MWD, they're back in the bottom right-hand quadrant. If you combine scientific drilling as a bottom hole assembly with mud motors and MWD, you'll find that they're, for the most part, pretty consistently viewed as a value advantage supplier in the United States land market with customer loyalty ratings that are either on par with industry or better than the industry. In this directional, showing tremendous improvement in their mud motor performance uh, with their uh, advancements and redesigns in motor design. Very strong performance. Uh, Phoenix performance uh, declined from 2017 to 18 days, but showing very consistent performance on par with industry norm most recently. Pro directional view is uh, value advantaged. 
not all users of Mud Motors are 100% price buyers or 100% technology buyers or 100% service buyers. What we find is that the oil and gas operators tend to segment out. Some oil and gas operators place higher value and on service and their selection and evaluation of a supplier. Other oil and gas operators place higher emphasis on technology and performance, and, and some tend to be a little bit more procurement or price driven. The price, uh, the oil and gas operators that most heavily emphasize price tend to like a lot of the small to mid-tier suppliers and scientific drilling. Technology tend to prefer Baker Hughes as the performance leader. The service buyers tend to see undifferentiatedness amongst many of the suppliers. However, as you can see, most competitively disadvantaged amongst the service and technology buyers. When we move to measurement while drilling, transmission rates and reliability are the two biggest areas for desired improvement. Um, the market is highly fragmented, as we pointed out with Bud Motors. It's 39 different suppliers cited as being used in North America land for measurement while drilling, MWD. Market continues to consolidate and go to international and offshore. Again, you can see in North America land for measurement while drilling, the big three have about 30% of the market. Generally speaking, with the small to mid-tier making up the remaining close to 70%. Market does tighten up considerably for international. Weatherford shows up as a player, and then offshore the big three dominate. We again see performance variance amongst the MWD suppliers through the eyes of the end users, the oil and gas operators, and we can track the performance differences. Again, emphasizing how important it is to do your proper due diligence when selecting a supplier. If you're going to select a supplier solely on low price there's a good possibility you may not get best overall value at the end of the day. When you take a look at the competitive landscape for measurement while drilling in, in the North America land market, again, you see Phoenix Pro Directional, MS Directional, Scientific, Gordon, and Baker Hughes, all viewed as um, delivering good, strong value. KOX and, and Lean remain as discount providers, underperforming with attractive pricing strategies. Somerset and Halliburton competitively disadvantaged in the North America land market. Moving into the Gulf of Mexico, you see Baker Hughes competitively advantaged over Somerset, Halliburton positions as a discount provider, underperforming but an acceptable value. International land, again, Somerset, uh, the dominant uh, performance leader, followed by Baker Hughes in second position, and then Halliburton in third position, Weatherford positioned as a discount provider. Offshore, we see differentiated value again, pay more, get more, pay less, get less for Halliburton, pay more, get more for Schlumberger. And so we see differentiated value, at least the offshore oil and gas operators see differentiated value based on their evaluation of the performance of the MWD suppliers in the offshore market. So you can see Baker Hughes for MWD uh, showing very strong performance in just about all the geographic regions with the exception of West Africa and Latin America. Halliburton underperforming um, in most regions relative to industry benchmark performance levels, but viewed as delivering acceptable values in Africa, uh, Middle East, Latin America, Gulf of Mexico. Somerset, very strong internationally and offshore, showing uh, competitive vulnerabilities in North America and uh, a little bit in Asia Pac. Weatherford, um, again, underperforming uh, industry averages, but well positioned with pricing strategies viewed as an acceptable value, showing improvement from 20 to 21, as we observed with Mud Motors as well. Scientific drilling, uh, viewed consistently as a value advantage supplier for the U.S. land market, uh, consistently getting customer uh, uh, loyalty ratings as measured by the net promoter score that, that are higher than the industry average year on year. They did kind of Converge here most recently as the industry improved in aggregate. In this directional, uh, well positioned as a value advantage supplier with very high customer loyalty ratings amongst the users that use MS directional. Phoenix delivering on par with industry norm. Pro directional uh, viewed as value advantaged. Gordon Technologies uh, positioned as more of a premium offering. KOX Energy, a discount provider, underperforming, but um, usually within the, the discount provider quadrant, and then Lean, also a discount provider. 
Again, uh, regardless if it's MUD motors or MWDs, the markets are not 100% homogeneous driven by price alone. Again, many operators most highly value service, others value technology. And again, you can see amongst the, the service buyers for MWD, scientific drilling and the small to mid tiers are viewed most favorably. Amongst the technology buyers, Baker Hughes are the big three viewed most favorably. And scientific drilling and the mid tier, small to mid tier suppliers viewed most favorably amongst the price buyers. Things do change when you move to the Gulf of Mexico. It's very driven by uh, performance or, or procurement. Uh, Baker Hughes is viewed favorably amongst both of those big buying groups. So Baker Hughes competitive position in the Gulf of Mexico, very strong. When we move to rotary steerable systems, what we find is that even though the use of rotary steerable systems is observed to be growing in use from 2018 up through 2020, we do see a, a decline in the use of the rotary steerable systems in 2021 as operators begin to become a little bit more selective about when and where to apply rotary steerable systems, certainly driven through some of the challenging uh, cost and, and financial challenges faced in the most recent 12 months for the industry. When you get to rotary steerable systems, Unlike what you saw with MUD motors and MWD, where there's close to 40 or 50 different suppliers mentioned as being used, rotary steerable systems is really only nine different suppliers mentioned as being used globally. And quite candidly, the big three suppliers, Somerset, Baker Hughes, and Halliburton, comprise you know nearly 90% of the market share. And so, even though there's been some new entrants into the market, you know, whether for its Magnus and Scientific Drilling, Halo and Halliburton's iCruz. Baker Hughes and Slumberger, for the most part, have been able to hold on to their market share. And even though, um, you know, Weatherford, Scientific Drilling, and Halliburton are all working to try to improve their performance of rotary steerable systems, um, in many cases, they're still trying to work out the kinks. As mentioned earlier, Weatherford uh, left uh, the North America market to focus on the international market. Halliburton's focusing more on international growth. The U.S. land market is probably the most challenging market for these rotary steerable systems. Scientific drilling's HALO continues to make some progress in the U.S. land market as well. Um, when you take a look at the competitive positioning, you can see in North America land, Baker Hughes, Scientific Drilling, and Halliburton are all kind of clustered together in a very similar area. But clearly, Baker Hughes and Somerset have the preponderance of market share in use amongst the users in North America land. And amongst the two market share leaders, Baker Hughes is outperforming Somerset to the eyes of the customers, even though Somerset is receiving a little bit uh, more use and market share. When you move to international land, Somerset is viewed as a value advantage and top performer. Halliburton underperforming um, the most amongst the big three. Uh, Weatherford's performance has improved and is considered to be on par with industry average in positioning themselves as a low price discount alternative to Baker Hughes and Slumberger. In the internet and the offshore market, again, we see the oil, offshore oil and gas operators expressing a, a view of differentiated value. Uh, all the suppliers are in the fair value fairway, uh, pay more, get more with Slumberger, pay less, but get less with Halliburton. Baker Hughes looks very strong for rotary steerables in the North America land and offshore markets, exhibiting a little bit more competitive uh, challenges in the international land market. Uh, Halliburton um, viewed as underperforming versus industry average, but ex viewed as acceptable values in North America land and offshore, competitively and performance challenged in the international land market. Somerset very strong offshore internationally and then competitively challenged in the North America land market. Weatherford's performance has improved, um, generally speaking, over the last four years and has reached industry average benchmark performance for the first time in four years based on customer reviews in the international market. Scientific drilling continuing to progress forward. Uh, their halo system in the U.S. land, I, I think it'd be worthy to kind of watch the adoption and, 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 and success that halo is able to achieve moving forward. When we move into drill bits, what we find is most of the footage continues to be drilled with fixed cutter drill bits. Um, most of the oil and gas operators worldwide are using close to three different suppliers for their uh, drill bit use. Baker Hughes, Halliburton have the deepest market penetrations, followed by Halliburton, NOV, and Altera. What we find here is 
Altura continues to, to have very strong market penetration in the North America land market, um, right up there leading the pack with Baker Hughes. A total of 18 different drill bit suppliers were cited as, as being used worldwide. But even though there's 18 different suppliers being used and the average operator is using close to three different suppliers for their drill bits, what we find is the majority of the market share is comprised in these top five suppliers, Baker Hughes, Schlumberger, Halliburton, NOV, Reed Heikelog, and Altera. Altera continues to grow market share, um, and that's usually based, which you'll see here in a moment, on very strong performance. When we look at the performance variances amongst the drill bit suppliers, we still see sufficient variance in performance that if we start to track different performance of the suppliers, like for North America land, you can see you know, Halliburton improving, but again, receiving customer review ratings that are below the industry average. Schlumberger improving, but again, customer review ratings have been below industry average in the North America land market. Conversely, Altera um, receiving performance reviews that are consistently better than industry average. You look at companies like Barrel that show kind of inconsistent performance from year to year, albeit a, a smaller. When you move internationally, again, you see quite a bit of variance in performance amongst the suppliers. Um, and then when you move offshore, you see a little bit more of a convergence, if you will, amongst the major drill bit suppliers, amongst many of the performance measures. And you see, in many cases, Halliburton, uh, Somerset, and Baker Hughes converging to the eyes of the offshore oil and gas operators and is performing at a more close, similar level on certain of these performance attributes. When you look at the overall competitive landscape in U.S. land, Altera is clearly the, the market leader, both in terms of uh, um, performance and value, given the size that they have. Baker Hughes and Altera are the market share leaders in the, in the U.S. land market. Some other smaller suppliers, to, to maybe the highlight is a small supplier called Torex that tends to stand out in the 2021 survey based on the customers that reviewed them, gave them very favorable ratings and viewed them in a value advantage position. Barrel in a discount position and Reed Heikel all viewed as performing close to being on par. Halliburton, Slumberger, and Baker Hughes are all exhibiting um, some slight uh, vulnerabilities in the U.S. land market. However, differences are observed when you look at independents versus major oil companies in the U.S. land market. Baker Hughes viewed very, very strongly amongst the major oil companies in the U.S. land market. Internationally, you can see Baker Hughes viewed very strongly. Somerset as a premium supplier, Halliburton underperforming. NOV and Altera kind of pricing themselves as lower priced alternatives to the big three drill bit suppliers in the international land market. Offshore, we see differentiated value again with Schlumberger and, and Baker Hughes in the premium supplier quadrant. Halliburton as a discount provider and NOV again using low price as a differentiator in the offshore market. When you move to the Permian Basin and, and you start to look at things regionally, you can see Altera looks very strong in the, in, in the all important uh, Permian Basin. When we go ahead and just take a look at overall performance summaries of the major drill bit suppliers, you know, Baker Hughes continues to globally lead market share on a global basis. They continue to lead customer loyalty on a global basis, and they continue to show extremely strong performance in many of the regions in which they participate and serve globally. Uh, we talked about U.S. land and then a little bit of West Africa where they do have a few performance uh, vulnerabilities, but again, we do see variances by customer type, be it majors versus independents. U.S. land, you can see uh, Baker Hughes well positioned in many of the key markets, uh, exhibiting some vulnerability in the Bakken, Rockies, and Haynesville. Halliburton, um, you can see from year to year, uh, viewed as performing close to on par with industry average, but generally kind of trending below industry average with customer loyalty ratings that are also below the industry average, which tends to correlate with their broader performance reviews. But in many areas, you can see Halliburton viewed as delivering an acceptable value. Um, Halliburton's competitive position and value does, does vary by region. Somerset, pretty consistently positioned as the premium-based supplier, particularly offshore internationally, showing most of their vulnerabilities in North America. NOV Reed Heikelog, uh, viewed as value advantage to many of the key regions in which they participate, are on par with uh, fair value. 
Altair, consistently viewed as a value advantage supplier, particularly in the United States land market, is beginning to expand internationally. And uh, it'll be interesting to follow Altair's progress as they expand globally to see if they're still able to maintain customer service levels um, at the levels for which they've become accustomed to be known for in the U.S. land market. Uh, Vero has consistently underperformed the market. Um, they did show some uh, modest improvement from 20 to 21. Um, so that's positive. Um, probably just looking for uh, consistent operational excellence um, would be things to look for for Verrill's improvement going into 2022. Moving into the drilling fluid section of the report, what we find is that the international tends to use a higher level of uh, oil-based and synthetics uh, in the offshore market, water-based mostly in the international market. And then, and depending upon what section of the well being drilled in North America, oil based or water based. Tremendous number of suppliers, 46 different drilling fluid suppliers cited as being used globally, very fragmented, very similar to that of Mud Motors and MWD. When you take a look at the overall performance reviews for drilling fluids, again, we see quite a big strong variance in performance amongst these 40-something drilling fluid suppliers. So again, as an oil and gas operator, I know some people may think drilling fluids are drilling fluids, but as you saw earlier in the report, um, internationally and offshore drilling fluids were cited as, as, as having some meaningful impact in improving drilling operations. And we do see variance in the performance of the various drilling fluid suppliers. Amongst the major drilling fluid suppliers, and just on a global basis, Newport tends to receive customer reviews that are higher than the other big three suppliers, uh, Halliburton, and Somerset and Baker Hughes. Regional variances are certainly observed um, as you move around from North America land. International land, you see some convergence on many of the performance attributes. And offshore, you can you see some convergence amongst the suppliers on some of the performance attributes and some separation on others, like product quality. When you take a look at the overall competitive landscape, what we find is in North America land, New Park, along with a, a whole host of small to mid-tier suppliers, are kind of viewed as uh, the value advantaged. AES or CES drilling fluids is positioned more as a premium-based supplier. Um, if you look in Canada, for example, you can see AESCS uh, positioned as a very solid uh, premium-based supplier. When you move U.S. land is where they become a little bit more vulnerable. Halliburton, market share leader, and certainly a leader in drilling fluids in terms of legacy, market share, and technology, viewed as performing about on par with industry norm. When you move internationally, Halliburton very solidly viewed on par with industry norm. Slumberger positioned as the premium-based supplier. New Park is a value advantage supplier. Uh, Baker Hughes is um, competitively disadvantaged in certain of the select international regions in which they participate. Um, Gulf of Mexico, uh, Halliburton is clearly the market share leader, uh, viewed as performing on par with industry norm. New Park is positioned as a little bit of a value premium based supplier uh, with performance a bit better than industry average. Baker Hughes albeit with a much smaller presence in the Gulf of Mexico today, um, but still amongst uh, their, the users in the Gulf of Mexico view them favorably with some exhibiting some vulnerabilities for drilling fluids. Internationally, we find that Baker Hughes and New Park are really positioned as value advantaged. Uh, Somerset and Halliburton are certainly well within the fair value fairway. Somerset positioned as the premium based supplier, cost more but worth it. Halliburton more of a discount provider. A bit unusual to see Halliburton positioned as a discount provider, and we'll see um, with continued focus and improvement if Halliburton's performance and through the eyes of the end user and the customers will continue to improve and position them more on par with Slumberjay in some of these critical offshore and international markets. Um, so just to summarize Baker Hughes' performance by region, um, you can see competitively advantaged in Latin America, Gulf of Mexico, Asia Pac. Um, showing some vulnerabilities in the Middle East. Halliburton, very solid performance in all regions in which they participate in, viewed as delivering solid value. Um, maybe a little bit of vulnerability expressed in U.S. land to the small to mid tiers and in West Africa. Um, traditionally, very high customer loyalty ratings, but you can see that the, um, the industry average has, has crossed and they've actually fallen slightly below for the first time in, in many, many years. Uh, 
the Schlumberger is solidly positioned in most of the international and offshore markets, uh, mostly competitively disadvantaged in North America, U.S. land, Canada, Gulf of Mexico. New Park, competitively advantaged in most markets in which they participate in, viewed as a premium supplier in the Gulf of Mexico. I think in summary, if we were to summarize this up real quick with the big uh, three or four suppliers, you can see that amongst product lines for Baker Hughes, uh, drilling fluids is probably the product line that's exhibiting the, the, the most vulnerability. You can see that uh, Baker Hughes is very consistent with most of their drilling services product lines, mud motors, very stables and bits, very solid in most of the geographic regions in which they're providing drilling services. Keep in mind, particularly when we move internationally, oftentimes you do see integrated drilling services where bits and bottom hole assembly fluids are all combined as a package. And you see very solid performance here from Baker Hughes uh, universally across their drilling services platform. Halliburton, um, you can see Baroid is by far the strongest product line of their drilling services portfolio. Um, even though they're viewed as underperforming in, in many of their drilling services, like Mud Motors and MWD, um, in many cases in the regions overall, they're viewed as delivering an acceptable value, even though they may not be industry leading. Performance and pricing strategies do place them in many, many areas as viewed as an acceptable value. In certain areas, they did fall outside of that, that acceptable range. Schlumberger consistently positioned as a premium-based supplier internationally. It's really in North America that we talked about earlier, where um, they're exhibiting some uh, competitive challenges. But again, they have other mechanisms and channels to market using Extreme and others. Um, Weatherford, um, as you know, focusing principally internationally, having departed the North America land market. Um, you can see Brody Sterville is viewed most favorably versus Motors and MWD uh, and viewed uh, you know, close to delivering acceptable value in Latin America, Middle East, exhibiting most vulnerabilities in the European region. So that summarizes many of the key findings of the drilling equipment and services uh, series of reports that were published most recently. Um, again, I'd like to thank all the oil and gas operators worldwide who contributed to this report. Um, some of the trends that uh, we would that we anticipate moving forward in the market would include probably a little bit more consolidation in some of these areas that are fragmented to provide a little bit more scale, particularly in the North America market. I think it's certainly reasonable to anticipate drilling contractors like Patterson that has in this directional and, and other drilling contractors to be able to, to drive efficiencies of personnel and expertise at the rig site to, to further reduce uh, footprints and, and, and manpower required to get um, services done. We'll continue to see increased use of drilling advisory systems and real-time operations to help drive efficiencies into the process. Um, and then in terms of the second half of this year for 2021, operators are continuing to exhibit uh, budget discipline. We'll probably continue to see some modest increases in, in drilling drill, drill account as they begin to prepare and set the table for what's believed to be an investment cycle for 2022 and beyond. Uh, certainly, the Delta variant will be something to watch, but and, you know, in all likelihood, I think most many believe that um, you know the world will begin to accept the fact that there's a virus out there that we have to learn to to live with. And, uh, and, and, and lives and, and economies will continue to move forward. Um, in terms of future reports coming up at Kimberlite, for those that may be interested, uh, we have reports coming up with hydraulic fracturing for, uh, for the hydraulic fracturing market, which is heavily North America centric, followed by updates for the artificial lift production chemicals markets coming up here in September, and then perforating and completion fluids also coming up in the fall. I'd like to take any questions really quick. Um, it may have come up in the chat box. So I uh, don't see any immediate questions that need to be addressed. I mean, hopefully uh, today we, we demonstrated to you that there are a very, uh, very many different suppliers that, that can uh, differentiate themselves in the market with outstanding customer service and customer experience and performance. Uh, doing your due diligence as an oil and gas operator is important, recognizing that not all oil field service companies perform it the same homogeneous level. And most and many oil field service companies will have regions in which they're differentiated and advantaged or perhaps exhibiting some vulnerabilities. 
So thank you for joining us today. Please feel free to reach out to discuss any questions that you may have. And uh, thank you very much. Bye now.